It used to be the standard across the Western world that immigration was limited to exchange students, particularly in the college level, high school workers, and their families, whose children, statistically speaking, will become college students and high school workers themselves. Of course, especially after war and famine, there may be waves of immigration, but it was never to the extent that we have today. Today, governments across the Western world encourage mass unrestrained immigration. I'm Jay Faiza from the Rebel.media, and let me explain to you the economic and cultural problems associated with mass unrestrained immigration. The third world is full of people in extreme poverty, billions that desperately need food, clothes, and capitalism. Most of the third world don't have wealth, so when they come into the first world, they have a tendency to be part of the welfare state. Around 76% of immigrant-led households with children receive some kind of welfare benefit. This includes Medicaid, food stamps, uh, school lunches, and housing assistance. According to the Center of Immigration Studies, the average household headed by an immigrant family, legal or illegal, costing the individual taxpayer $6,000 in federal welfare benefits. To be more specific, the average immigrant household consumes 33% more cash welfare, 57% more food assistance, and 44% more Medicaid dollars than the average native-born household. This includes native blacks. Liberals like to point out that immigrants overall do ever so slightly provide more than they take. However, that's only because a minority of immigrants are high-skilled workers. If we canceled high-skilled workers from the equation, then indeed immigrants would in fact overall take more than they provide. Our immigration policy has inflated our welfare system. In short, well over half of immigrants are dependent on the welfare state to take care of them. And because of that, the average taxpayer has to compensate for that expense. Basically, taxpayers are losing more money to the state to support poor immigrants when we have poor native-born people of our own. We already have a giant welfare state, millions of people who are already dependent on other people's labor. Now, with this policy in place, even more people are dependent on others. Look, I have no animosity against the poor, but if the left is going to make the argument that having mass unrestrained immigration is a net positive for the economy, they're wrong. The most unquestionable belief among liberals is the belief that somehow multiculturalism is inherently good. In fact, liberals would argue that multiculturalism is superior to a unified culture. The evidence, though, is lacking. What does multiculturalism bring anyway? Food? Sure, we're introduced to different cuisine, but private industry can easily provide us with that cuisine if there's already a market or demand. Language? Sure, we're introduced to new languages, but we're introduced to people who have a difficult time communicating with us. And sometimes we let in thousands of people who cannot speak the language. For example, in Canada, roughly one in eight immigrants accepted between 2001 to 2016 cannot carry a conversation in either French or English, the official languages of Canada. In Germany, almost a million Turkish immigrants cannot speak or write in German. In fact, 80% of Turkish immigrant children living in Germany can't speak or write in German either. So how do these people function in normal society? Well, they can't, realistically speaking. And this goes to the very core as to why multiculturalism is bad in the cultural sense. Multiculturalism, especially under the banner of unrestrained immigration, has a tendency to ghettofy a nation. People living with their own kind. And when you ghettofy a nation, things fall apart. Liberals claim that multiculturalism benefits a nation. The more culture, the better. Clearly, these people haven't studied the Indian subcontinent or the Caucasus Mountain regions. If they did, they'd realize that the more divided a nation is culturally, the more violent it tends to get. And just like what happened in the Indian subcontinent and in the Caucasus Mountain regions, Islam, the religion of peace, is what's causing the cultural divide and thus violence. We've seen Islamic terrorist attacks occur in Cologne to Paris. We've seen thousands of children sex trafficked by Muslim grooming gangs in Rotherham, UK. We've seen the number of rapes dramatically increase in countries like Sweden. But keeping it real, we've also seen vigilantes attacking Muslims in Muslim-majority neighborhoods all across Europe. And although I think it's great we've seen the rise of nationalism and conservatism all across Europe, it's great that that's happening. There's also the unsettling tide of Nazism, like the Golden Dawn Party in Greece, for example. And that's not so great. That and more are examples as to why, as Angela Merkel said, multiculturalism has failed. Does that mean you should be against all immigration? Not necessarily. If you were to only accept high skill workers, for example, not only would that benefit the economy, but this form of limited immigration won't upset the dominant culture within society. It won't cause society to culturally fracture and go into these separate groups, thus no more ghettos and much less violence and unrest on cultural and racial grounds. But since our liberal society and government has mass unrestrained immigration, we're going to have to face with this economic and cultural problems head on.
Well, in that respect, I'm glad Brexit won, I'm glad Trump won, and I'm glad Marine Le Pen will win too. I'm Jay Faza from the Rebel Dot Media. Hey, you enjoyed the video? You like what you saw? Please subscribe to the Rebel Dot Media.